guys, you know, here's another critique. This guy's got a beautiful channel, 463,000 people. All right. <clears throat> He's doing a, with the, with the assistance of a soil engineer, apparently, per his statement and per his video. This is the only second video I've seen of this and uh, of his project. Sorry, I bit my tongue, so it takes me a second to pause and get my tongue together. But look what I wrote here. I'm sure you have a surcharge problem. The top of this wall is overloaded. Does your soil engineer have all his pistons firing? Plus, you may be plus. You might be overloading the toe of your footer at the corner detail with those boulders. Hmm. You should have been using a gator grid fabric for this type of for this job and not just soil compaction. Sorry, gosh, my tongue. Um, practical engineering wrote a comment down here. Looks awesome. In water resources engineering, we use root wrap for erosion control. It's fairly common to use it upstream. Uh, in the face of embankments, dams to prevent damage to wave action. I have a coworker who refused to work. Well, look, the the point that I'm making here about practical engineering is uh, why didn't he mention this? Why didn't he mention what I mentioned? All right, so let's let's uh, what he, all he's doing is using compaction and no gator type product, no locking grid. But let's jump around a little bit. Let's back this up. Look how huge this is above his wall. And you see a crack there already. This is already just craziness, right? So look at this wall. Look at this system. Now he's standing on the lower part of the system, but this is well overloaded. This is the surcharge on this wall is just it's just friggin' ridiculous. We didn't want it to look like um, a penitentiary and but still we maximize the footprint. Let me let me show you, let me just screen for it a little bit. So we're gonna move him down to the bottom side of the wall where he's not stretched out right quite down here so is where far. He's putting him. No Give up a little grid. bit of that leverage. The thing is double heavy and perfect. So now this is crazy. This is crazy. There's a there's a thousand plus pounds. And then he's just loading and loading and loading thousands and thousands of pounds above it. Well, this is just an end detail. That's not I saw it in the previous video, the only two I've seen. It's just meshing and you use stone behind you. Right here he's gonna load. Also, uh let me turn it down. He's also going to load uh, stone here, so that puts a... This combination a, of concrete and basalt rockery is quite mm -hmm. imposing and a little heavy looking. But over time, the color of the concrete will darken. I may even acid stain it. We will landscape, we'll add ferns and moss and trees, all sorts of color. Let me jump forward. It was sort of a major balancing act or compromise. We were balancing more, more appearance, structural integrity, safety for future homeowners, cost, and of course, the most important part that we wanted to make great video content for our viewers. When you were on the front end of a project like... Let me jump forward a bit. particular yes. width. Here we go. So, you know, the, the, anything you put here, it's in line with this wall. So all this load is in line with this with this wall. None of it's none of it's heading down to the footer. It's all the loads are transferring pretty much top of this wall structure. That I just find it's amazing that he has a soil engineer that uh, that that is, that is okay with this. That Carl Broda specified on the base course Carl of this rockery in order to come up a certain distance. We knew how high we had to come, and so we knew how wide it had to be, and we knew what the slope needed to be on the face of this thing. Look at him place these things. I mean, he, he's moving them in half-inch increments. He's wiggling them into place, and then he's tapping them down to help them come to... So all this will create water directly down there. You're going to undermine the soil, and you have the load source. You know, this, this will cause it. Wow, the top top over this is just this is just crazy sort of a resting place we decided to shake a little bit of this clean two inch into the gaps to sort of let me fast forward a little bit lock in there tighter on an excavator and so as he's breaking them down into the size that'll go into the crusher he's also sorting it for the just jump there now hold on i want to show you one more two more things here give me I mean, I guess the soil engineer doesn't understand how uh, loads transfer. I don't. I don't get it. You may remember that this concrete wall sits about three inches onto my property. That means. So he's down here at the footer. 
See the footer there exposed? Dug it out, and they put this below the footer. This is going to be a great place for water just to go straight down there, pull, undermine this footer, and now the uh, undermine it, meaning literally undermine it, wash it out. And it's just ridiculous. This is just ridiculous. And I see, uh, so I'm triggered, obviously. Let's go on. This wall is not, you know, it's, it's it, the height of it is, is just, uh. That this little cascade, I'll call it, this little. Cascade, I'll call it a cascade. It's going to be a cascade of water right down under, under your footer. Pile of that Brian is sitting with, it, <clears throat> setting in place with his smaller excavator are sitting entirely on the neighbor's ground. This is something that my neighbor knows about. He's aware of it, and he's agreed to it. In fact, the arrangement was this that these rocks belong to him, amazingly, and we're just installing them You can't make him. something with built-in obsolescence Having more these so rocks than this. Here assists him with his retaining problems and erosion control and really helps smooth out the appearance of the of the so water run off, it'll go right underneath the this footer. Of both of our properties. This retaining wall uh, system increased the buildable space on both of our lots. I'm listening to him. And we're both delighted. Let me fast forward this. I want to show you what the base of this looks like also. Getting sometimes within inches of where the rock had to be placed in order. Wow. So, uh, hard, and this hits as hard as a small vibratory that's just roller. tamper. But it's easier to move Rental. around. It's easier to you don't hold the lock. The, the house is not held, and so all of these things work together. Look how but huge it is. How high it is concrete. above? How high it is above his eight foot wall, or whatever apparently a panel is, whatever the panel height of that is. And then he went up on top of that even further, and ran the soil to it. He, this engineer, now he's not the engineer; he's the one that runs his, has his channel here. Is just, I just find this, this just, just, just wildly crazy. Um, where is the other? Trying to find the, this is episode 20, 21. How do I find episode uh, 19? I think it's the one before this one. So let's let's just jump to that real quickly. Let me get you episode 19. Bear with me. Um, Most of your hammering needs to happen. Whatever. Look, uh, episode 19. Come on, really? Really? Episode 19. Okay, episode 24. Huh. I don't, um, can she search it here? How do you do episode? Let's see, how's he do episode? He does episodes by episode 24. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Great, EP 21. So EP. Dot 19. Maybe that's the way he does his episode 19. Good. So I'll figure that out. Stripping All right, so wall forms is fun. There's no other way to describe it. It's so always fun. Wall forms. When you got a nice sunny day, when your back does. So that that's not even the same location. It will Hold be on. protected under a layer that's of this a rock. And will yeah, that's not even the same location. Field. See a that? Tool like this Hold on. Let's see if we can fast forward. It. There we go. It's too multiple locations. Have to be acid washed off. So here's that corner of this crack with the, what I showed you in the beginning of the video. I don't want that. So I went ahead and took the extra so step. So he put stone down here. Let me back that down. So he put stone down here. Did it in lifts, fabric, lifts. But it, there's no gator grid. There's nothing back here tying all this soil in. This is just going to allow the transfer of the loads right out to the wall of the surcharge. It's just fundamentally... It's just wrong. And look, he's, you know, we're, 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 it's at least an eight foot wall. Look at these guys hiding it. They've got stone on top. No gator grid. They're just going to load it up with filter fabric, <clears throat> stone and dirt. And there he is with the tamper. He's going to compact the soil so it makes it even more heavy, more dense, um, which is, which would be okay if you were running some gator grid, grid, but all you did was just make this solid soil. Um, of course, that, that can be okay. Also, right here is where I told you guys they didn't have the uh, that, that piece of wire. He's also running all his drainage down through the footer. And ultimately, the city, I think he said, ties. It has to tie in the drainage system to the city. Wow. So now, let's, let's you just see what the, what's going on here. No gator grid. Just compaction. And then... This but then this. what happens in the summer is that soil shrinks and it pulls back 
from the face of that wall and leaves a gap. You've probably noticed a crack against the face of a wall where the soil comes in contact with maybe the foundation around your house or a retaining wall. Summertime, the soil shrinks and there's a crack. And what happens is little bits of rock and dirt erode and break <clears throat> off and fall down there and leaves and twigs and bits of material fall into that void over the summer and into the fall. And then in the winter, when the rains come again, the soil saturates and swells up and pushes itself back out just as far as it can go against the Let me the tell you, you, you know, you, 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 don't, you, don't have to, that, you don't have to wait till the summer for that to happen. Now, his claim is that the soil pushed this wall over, the, the load up here pushed this wall over. If, if that was the case, you would see that would be indicated by a crack in somewhere in this wall system. You have no crack in this wall, block wall system. This is a footer being undermined, not this this uh, rubbish that he's stating that it's uh, it's it's being pushed over from the top. You can see the you see any soil coming out here? I sure don't. This is undermined from the footer being wrote, being underwashed, and it's uh, being trying to find equilibrium and it's it's rotating, leaning over. Um, okay. <clears throat> Fast forward. More and more material wedges itself. He said he's stating that somehow magically that all that that little bit of water pressure down here caused this wall to lean over. Uh, the footer is what happened again, guys. Here, this is a footer issue, not a wall issue. Against the face of that wall, and so the pressures in the winter time mount. It's way down here. You see, where we are. We're down here at two blocks. Two. Uh, well, apparently, looks like two. Maybe two blocks high. Until finally that wall will begin. And now we're at three blocks high It'll and push four. Over a little in the four blocks high. And once again, he's claiming that these soil loads uh, did this. That the soil loads did it. Um, and magically pushed this way and not, not this way. We've got a crack here, obviously. I, we don't know how this wall was, was, was put together. Um, we have no idea. But this is a footer issue again. This is not this soil pushing from the top of this over. This soil didn't all of a sudden have a way to jack. He's soil jacking, as he stated. It didn't have a way to jack its way from a solid point and then run against this and find this least solid and push this over. Wouldn't it stand to reason that if the soil was doing some jacking in this case, that it would the soil would just get more and more dense behind it? That the compaction pushing against here as a counterforce would just compact the soil behind it. Um, until you can no longer compact it. Then you get this magical soil jack and they can push this part of the wall over. This is footer, guys. Footer, footer, footer. This is not these stones um, pushing this out with some magical uh, rainwater. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't have the power to do that. Even if it froze. This, this, is not enough, this is not enough water content to freeze and push this over like that. Footer, 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 foundation here. Water's coming down. It can't escape. It goes down to the bottom. That soil at the base shrinks, uh, expands and shrinks, expands and shrinks. And now it's losing its capacity. That's when it loses capacity and you get this tilting going on. Summer while the dirt pulls back. That's called wall jacking. We don't want it to happen. So we're making sure we've got an 18 inch to two foot wide layer of filtered, there's that wire mesh I, I told you guys was up there. And again, no gator grid, nothing like that. This is how you would never do a wall system. And again, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. What's this say? Um, house build. Yeah, he's going to build a house up here somewhere. Um, Ten foot My setback. geotechnical engineer, Carl Broda, yeah. has informed me that I will. he will not be comfortable with, nor will he stand behind, placing any structure any closer than... 10 feet horizontally to this wall. So I've got... Yeah, and I, I wonder if this... And, and it, it's just... Wow. Got an automatic 10-foot setback before the house can start, which means that about half of that, five or six feet, which is the width of this backfill, is never going to have any vertical loading except the rockery that I place on the top, which is free to settle as far as I'm concerned. So I'm not... No, ver except for the vertical loading of the rock. So he thinks that the light rock is just... Magically, just goes straight down. There's no, there's no lateral um, loads that those rocks are applying. So that's what the problem is. This, this, this guy thinks that 
the loads go straight down in the earth. That they somehow don't go sideways. Also, they go sideways about compacting forty-five is degrees, too guys. Tight. Keep in mind that as you're compacting against the retaining wall, the vertical load that you're putting with that compactor, which is fierce, measured in thousands and thousands of pounds, is also translating to a lateral or horizontal load against the face of that wall. Okay. So, so as you hammer down on the backfill, you're also hammering sideways on the wall. The last thing that I want to do is stress, pre-stress this wall with my compaction before it ever has to hold up the dirt. So I'm only compacting this backfill behind this wall to maybe 60 or 70 percent as per Mr. Broder's instructions. The so it's, 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 so he thinks he's compacting at 60 or 70 percent, but he has no tool to test that. So he does not know what he's doing uh, with that. Like you said, he just rented it. I own that tool. He does not know what he's doing there. And, and, and there we go. So, can I find it? Can I find the, uh... Hmm. So let's try that. Let's see episode 21, and then I'll terminate. So that was 20. We see 20. Let's, let's just see what... Most of your hammering needs to happen in this joint. The secondary joint in hammering is your elbow. The weight of the drill, the weight of your body, the horse... Uh, house build, episode 21. What? All right, that's there, 649. Um, let's hit that. Let's uh, fast forward now real quick. So since we have to utilize every single available square... Wow, look at this. There's that wall. Wow. And I think you said you're going to put car loads on top of this. This is just a nightmare. That was kind of a guess on my part, estimating where the garage would be and where a good spot would be to access the. Let's fast so forward to this retainer. Minimize yeah. the length, you minimize the grade, and you hope that it fits the house that goes on the lot. In our case, we're going to have to order the back and the setback in the front. Oh, he's real proud of showing this super surcharge on top of this wall system. That will cause your wall to fall us, from the top down. The size of this house was important. Heck, it's important to everybody that... Wow, you keep showing that thing. We're just going to have to go two-story. Now, we didn't originally want to do that. We were talking in terms of a house that... A retired... We've got a pretty nice view looking out of the south side of this property where the lot is the widest. So we should be able to capitalize on that with the living room and second. probably the master the bedroom system. upstairs, if possible. There you go. It's bowing right now. Now, we've got a video on design and all the things to consider and factor in. You may have watched it. I recommend you watch it because that's pretty much what we're going to be talking about for the next couple of videos. And as we begin to actually put our house on this site, the important. For mm. us, selling this house Here we go. is going to be the critical path. He looks like he's proud of his it's tracks. Those are, uh, those are a little bit of episode 24, retaining wall recap. Yeah. You all know by now that since concrete shrinks when it cures, it cracks. It's designed, wall systems like this are designed to accommodate those cracks. And not just to accommodate them, but to try to force the wall, the, con the system, yes. the system to crack where we want it to crack. So that, that it maintains the strength guys. that it has to have to do That's the work it has surcharge to do. On this. You remember that we carefully located and formed these control joints. Let me fast forward a little bit. We're gonna end this Down video. The outside of this corner. That's where the crack is. Create right a construction, here. a control joint on each side of this corner, that would have made it look like a nice column standing here. It would have made real good sense to do that, but I didn't. And so, since an inside corner concentrates forces, and this was shrinking in two directions, an initial settlement was pushing down on the entire wall system. It cracked. A pretty good crack. It yeah, runs it's back cracked. He got surcharge on this And right guys. down here. So it did a very about. similar thing over on this other side. It looks like you put a, a lot a of dirt back in. Over more in the middle of this panel that runs back, sort of accommodating the settlement over here, the rigid corner here. But I wish, I wish I would have run a construction control joint down each one of these corners. If it wouldn't have solved it, it sure would have minimized it. Now, is this a problem? Only to my pride, because we've checked and rechecked. No, that's failure, guys. That's loading failure. That's not shrinkage cracked. 
That's foundation up. We've put a micrometer on these cracks. We've checked for plumb. We've checked it now for a year and a half. And the wall is bulletproof year and a half. strong. It's, no, it's, it's a very obedient wall. It's doing exactly what we have asked it to do. But I wish I would have done that. Now, there's another alternative that would have taken way more time that would have changed this somewhat. And that is if I would have formed this corner in a radius, if I would have softened this corner so all the forces yeah, let me, would... Let me, uh, the other mistake that was made that you may have already recognized is that I had to restack these rocks. You see they're at a shallower angle. Well, because of a miscommunication, about a three-way miscommunication, it became obvious that I needed to reduce the slope, the pitch, on those rocks from where it was, and it was beautiful. I mean, Brian and the boys did a beautiful right. job. There we go. I needed to lay them back. So somebody reasons, did come forward and Reduce the out. load on the wall and reduce the fall hazard that a lot of you pointed out that would have been part of living here in a house right on the edge of a, what, about an 18-foot cliff. So... We just bit the bullet. At the time, I just I was a little feet. freaked out because in laying the slope back, I had to give up about six feet of lot size in both directions. And I already knew that the lot was tight. You removed them. The house that was drawn, it wasn't fully designed, but it's fast about forward. three weeks. All right. So now this surcharge is still on here. It's still a surcharge. It's still hitting this, the wall system at this point, not actually uh, getting down to the footer. This needs to be this needs to be flat out here, way out here. Not not this, not adding the surcharge, the extra materials. Terminating terminating video and eating a grape. Filter fabric in there and put the rocks back, and it's working great. The house fits. We're moving forward. In the rearview mirror, yeah, this wall was a lot of work, but this wall developed this lot in the best way. It could. I'm done. All right, guys. Gator, Gator fabric. Look it up. That's one of the materials. There's many different products that would do it. Had to make this stable all the way back. And you know, a soil engineer might even allow you to to load it with uh, some stones in this capacity with that type of just non-tied back wall. It's just a just just a wall. There's nothing special about that wall. It should not be loaded like this.